Joining me now, Vincent Warren. He just returned from Ferguson. He's executive director of the Center for Constitutional Rights and a former attorney for the ACLU. Also, Jason Riley, who's a Wall Street Journal editorial board member and a Fox News contributor. Thank you both for being here. Jason, let me start with you to get reaction from that. This is our race war, and police officers just have a fear of black men that makes them want to pull out their guns and shoot them. Yeah, the, the left is selling a false narrative here. Uh, we have too many black dead bodies in this country, but cops are not the reason. The black homicide rate is, is, is much too high. It is the leading cause of death for young black men. But blacks also commit seven to ten times more violent crime in this country than whites do. And 90% of their victims are other black people. We have so many dead black bodies in this country, Megan, not because cops are shooting them, but because other black people are shooting them. And the left is selling a false narrative out there, pretending that the opposite is true. What, what of the, these claims juxtaposed against what we heard last night from the prosecutor, what we've seen now that was presented to the grand jury, African-American witnesses going in there and saying, I'm telling you, it is exactly as the officer said it was. Michael Brown charged him. He shot, he stopped, he waited. Michael Brown charged again, he shot again. That's from African-American witnesses. How can this be a race war? Well, I don't, I'm not calling it a race war, and I also disagree with the idea that um, the primary problem with dead black men are other black people. But, you know, with respect to your question, here's the issue. It's not the race of the witnesses that matter. It's the race of the victim and the race of the perpetrator. And this is a situation here in Ferguson where those things are clear. It was a white police officer that killed a black man. I'm not saying that he killed him because he was black, but I am saying um, that black folks now that have to deal with all of these people that are killed by the police officer, whether or not they have a gun, that is a tremendous problem. That has to be resolved in this country, and it doesn't matter what, what the race is. It's a legal matter. Are. Whether or not he actually had a gun is almost irrelevant. What matters is what the officer, officer had reason to well, believe. Well, you know, Megan, as a legal matter, it actually does matter whether the person had a gun or not. And I'll tell you it's why. It's what's in the officer's head. It's true, but if the officer was saying, you know what, I have an unusual fear of black per people and didn't say that, Correct. didn't confess right. that, and said, but I feared for my life, most people might say it's perfectly fine for him to do it. It does actually matter because we use our senses, we use what we, use what we see. The man was unarmed when a police officer killed but an unarmed black person. But the cop didn't know that. And he, he, let, let's keep in mind that, that this confrontation occurred because Michael Brown took a shot at a cop who was sitting in his cop car and yes. reached for his gun. The issue here is black criminality, not the behavior of cops. It's the behavior of these young black men in these communities. Whenever a Ferguson goes down, we start talking about racial profiling. We start talking about, about poverty. We start talking about unemployment. We start, we start talking about tensions between the cops and black people. Those are effects. Those are not causes. Uh, the cause here is black criminality. The fact that, that blacks who are 13% of the population are responsible for an outsized amount of violent crime in this country. Jason, Until that ends, let me give you, you are fact. going to have racial profiling. The question you are is going actually to have not between blacks, black, black the criminality. Black and the question is not black Vincent. criminality. The question is the criminalization of black people. Here's what. Here's the point. All black people do not commit crimes. Therefore, all black people should not be policed in communities just because they're black. This is not about when all police that's departments, that's, that's when police true. departments occupy Nobody's black communities, that. when police departments occupy black communities, but where's the there responsibility for people. what Michael Brown did? Here's where the is the responsibility? He committed a crime that well, Michael, night. That's, on, well, that's Michael, clear. Here's the, here's, the, here's the question. That's not the question, Megan. The question is where's the responsibility for what Officer Wilson did? No, what, but what, you, what, you're jumping in over. The grand jury, you're, you're treating Michael Brown like he was a squeaky clean kid. I'm, his no, own business. I'm treating Michael Brown. He had Michael just Brown committed a robbery. Like he's a human the witness being. testimony no, is that he attacked being. a police officer I, we're all aware of what and the, went what the for the his gun. Here's, here's the question. I'm treating Michael Brown like he's a human being. Michael Brown was not the subject of that grand jury proceeding, although you would think he was because we heard more about what Michael Brown did from the testimony than we because did about what Officer Wilson did. Because if you attack a cop and charge after him, it's relevant to whether well, that cop has a right an, to it, defend himself. When, you know, these, the information is coming out from the, uh, from the grand jury. We're looking at it all. One of the things that, we, that I saw uh, when I looked at it was that the sergeant went to talk to Officer Wilson right after Michael Brown was shot. Michael Brown is dead on the ground. And the, the sergeant 
did not take down, write down, or record the statement of the police officer. Not only is that bad policing, it also sends the message that, my goodness, how can we be surprised that, that Darren Wilson's testimony fits the evidence when they didn't record Darren Wilson's testimony at the event? Did, did, did that sergeant also speak with all the African American witnesses it's, who came it's forward? It's not about the police, it is not about the over policing of black communities and young black men getting picked on by cops. Blacks are arrested at the same rate that, that, that victims of crimes identify blacks as their assailants. This is not about, blacks are in, or pops are in these communities because that is where the 9-11 calls originate. And they are largely there stopping blacks from harming one another. Well, this if, is not about the cops. If your answer is that people that live in black communities that haven't done anything wrong just have to live with the fact that they will get shot by police officers, I would say to you. Would Michael Brown have been shot by Darren Wilson if acceptable. he hadn't broken the law that day? Uh, I, who can answer that question? He, but the because qu police officers it, will know, shoot but, people whether they've broken the law or whether they haven't. Then why don't those cases get put in? They, those are the cases, the clear cases that should be shoved in people's faces front and center on the news and people should be forced to discuss it. Why take a case like this, which is so conflicted, in which there are so many African-American witnesses supporting the story of the right, white cop, where right. it's much more difficult for us to come together as a nation I'll and say, that. go ahead, quickly. Because the left wants to use racism as an all-purpose explanation for what ails the black community. Certain situations fit that narrative, like Ferguson. Certain situations do not, like Chicago. All right, guys, good debate. Thank you both for being here.